Today on Q&J, I ask myself, what would Lord Business do? Doggy Rampage. Q and J. Hey everyone, welcome back to Q&J. It's been a while, but I, I try to bring back this as much as possible. And plus, now that codexes are kind of on a hush-hush for a little while, you know, it's going to be a, probably a, maybe a couple months off before, with codex reviews, I have more time to put into Q&J, and that's awesome. So let's get Q&J back on track. I'm going to keep trying. Now, two weeks from today, I will be at Gen Con. So I'll probably pre-do a Q&J, and we'll see. You know, it'll all be good. So... As always, you guys left a bunch of comments and questions on my previous video, and I'll be answering them today. And if you have any more questions and comments, leave them in this video, and I'll answer them promisely soon. Mm -hmm. It's all good. So, very first question comes from Rhoda Fury. Rhoda Fury says, yeah, I have seen the Deadliest Girls in the Galaxy. Now, this was talking about female guardsmen, and I recommend uh, Deadliest Girls in the Galaxy. It's a really good model line for if you want to run female Imperial Guard. I'm planning to get some fairly soonish. I am also sorry for my dyslexia. Oh, no problem, Rota Fury. I can barely speak English myself. It's... If, don't worry. Uh, I didn't realize how badly written that was. Any, At any rate, I was wondering, what do you think your next studio army will be? Imperial Fists. There's a lot of options, and I know it may be a while, but I was just wondering. Imperial Fists. Because obviously I'm working on them now since... Um, I've had these Space Marines set aside for a while, waiting for the new Codex, and after the new Codex came out, then I can decide to assemble them. And I was very fortunate enough that Dark Angels and Space Marines came out so close together, so because I was actually debating on which models I should save for, for Dark Angels and which ones I should set aside for Space Marines, and now that I have both armies and both Codices in my hands, I can separate the two. So the two armies I'm going to work really hard on over the next few months. As you guys have seen, my Imperial Fist, now a bunch of... Co of um, Battle reports will be coming out shortly. I have like the entire month of August filled with battle reports, uh, one one a week for free, one in the warp with Imperial Fists. It's going to be really cool. And then I'll be also working on Dark Angels in the near future once I get my Imperial Fist army up to a level that I'm happy with. Then I'm, I'm going to pick, take some time, work on some Dark Angels, some Ravenwing, get Sam Ale, have some fun, play some different lists. Some com You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it. So I'm working on Imperial Fists and Dark Angels in the near future. Hagatrix Witch says, Jay, you're looking trim and growing your hair. Well, I, I'm ho hopefully looking trim. I'm trying to get a little healthier these days. Um, you know, I'm getting older. Got to eat healthier. Yeah. And as far as my hair goes, I actually got a haircut shortly afterwards. Um, yeah. But it's okay. You know, I'm going to try to keep my hair relatively clean. I should. Maybe not. I can grow my hair out like Dave. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know if my wife would like that, though. Maybe. Couldn't hurt. By the way, people, I should put in a, a little commercial here. Those of you who want your own... Uh, people keep asking about the J shirts I've been wearing, the Crazy Eyes. Ooh. If you ever want your own Crazy Eyes shirt, check out uh, miniwargamerj.spreadshirt.com and uh, there you can purchase any of my, my t-shirts. Cool. Uh, been a long time since Q&J. Nice to see it back. Thank you. And now it's back in this video as well. What do you think of the new Eldar Codex? And was... Was it needed, and is it broken? It isn't broken. I don't think it was needed, frankly. Um, Eldar were a really strong army beforehand. And if it really changed Eldar, I think it could have been needed, but it didn't really change Eldar. Like, it, it slightly changed what they think is what was powerful, you know? Uh, less Wave Serpent spam, now it's more Bike spam. But, um... I don't think it was needed as much as, let's say, Dark Angels was needed, Chaos Space Marines, Sisters of Battle, you know, the older codices that were really in Codex Creep, Purgatory, um, not the top level Codex, you know? I don't think it's broken, but it's very powerful. It's very powerful. Um, there's so many amazing options in it, uh, as there was in the previous Codex. The formations have insanely awesome rules. Like, the ability to run, and it's a guaranteed 6 on the running whenever you do your combat uh, focus, you know, it's good. What's the future of the Codices for 40k? Um, obviously, 
Since then, it's been Imperial Fists, or sorry, uh, Vanilla Marines and Dark Angels, and now apparently we're taking, it's supposed to be, the rumors are, like, four months off. It's going to be a while, like, September, October, maybe even November, before the next Codex. Who knows what it's going to be? I'm really hoping it's Chaos Space Marines, because they need to get a new Codex, too. Now they're the oldest Codex in existence, other than Sisters, if they ever get a Codex again. Uh, Adeptus Aurora does, right? But I'm hoping uh, Chaos. And now the next few months we get to sit back and kind of digest our codices and realize and get to try out some stuff and have a lot of fun because there have been like 10 codices this year. You know, we got Skatari, we got Cult Mechanicus, we got Eldar, we got Necrons, we got Space Marines, Dark Angels, Blood Angels, like maybe not this year for Blood Angels, maybe it was late last year, but it doesn't matter. Tons of codices, you know, and it's now time to take a break and let fantasy get some love Hopefully love Age of Sigmar. And, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I think the next codex should be probably Chaos. Rumors are, because Space, oh, and Space Wolves, you know, it came out this year. Um, yeah, there aren't that many codices left now. What are, what are the other 5th edi 6th edition codices? We've got Chaos. Chaos Demons. But they've got a Demonkin book, but still Chaos and Chaos Demons. We've got uh, Astro Militarum. We have Tau. Yeah, there's not that many left. Orcs, Tyranids. You know? Yeah. Most non Xenos armies have gotten updates so far. Well, because look at the Marines, right? The Vanilla, Dark Angels, Blood Angels, and Grey Knights, and. Space Wolves have all gotten 7th edition codices. So, all the Marines are taken care of. Yeah. Wow. So, maybe sisters, we'll see. Very good question, but thank you very much. They're brilliant, cool models, and worth collecting. Oh, also Skatari. I know, I love Skatari. I got a couple of Skatari models. When I have the money, I would love to build a Skatari army. But not in the near future. I already had the models for... Um, for Imperial Fists. That's why I'm going with them. Get some. Okay. I will definitely get some Hecatrix Switch. Thank you very much for your comment. Darren Ward. Hi, Jay. Love your videos. You are an inspiration to improve my painting, but my question is, I play Space Marines, and I'm always being beaten, and I'm not competitive, but seeing my army being crushed is really disheartening. I know what you mean. Can you help me improve my 1500-point list? I play Crimson Fists with Pedro Cantor. I would love to see a blood-red... First rise from the table with my enemy's troops cowering in fear. Thanks, Jay. So, we got a new codex since you posted this comment. But uh, what do I see in the vanilla codex that I really like? There's a lot of good stuff there. Now, you're playing... You're playing Crimson Fists. Hmm. I, I'm playing Pyro Fists, so it's not that far away from each other. What do I like right now? The really broken combinations that I'm seeing are the Triple Predator and Triple Vindicator lists. Um, they're very powerful. The Triple Vindicator is beyond powerful right now. It's insane. Um, you just drop a Apocalyptic Blast, Strength 10, and AP2, ignores cover on your opponent, turn 1, and destroy stuff. So that's good stuff there. Uh, the Double Demi Company is actually, I think, might be worth taking as well. It's a really expensive list to put together. But Double Demi Company, then you get a bunch of free Razorbacks and Drop Pods. And you can upgrade them and have a lot of extra free points. So, like, in a 1,500-point list, I've seen people create 1,850 points. Uh, so, you're playing 1,500. So, I've seen 1,500-point lists that have 2,000 points worth of models, basically, because of all the free upgrades that they get. Could be worth taking. Um... What other combinations? Librarian Conclave is hilariously powerful right now. I love it. I love running the the Conclave. Um, and that's about it. You know, as I said, now you're a Space Marines player, so if you want to run the Codex, you got to do a Demi Company as your core. And then question is, what do you want to run Auxiliary? Obviously, you're going to run Pedro Cantor with you, as, your, um, as your, your boss group, you know, on top of your Demi Company. Um, I would probably recommend a Captain, maybe a Chaplain, Depending on, on how you want to run your demi company, and yeah, and then for your devastators, I take devastator centurions if you have the option for your demi company. They're better than the devastators I find. 
because usually they're just point and click kill something. And if you have the points, triple vindicator if you want to go uber competitive, or triple predator depending on what you're up against. But triple vindicator is just hilarious. I, I faced it for the first time the other day, and it was nuts. It was really nuts. So I really hope that helps you. Um, I'm going to create a series soon called, uh, I'm going to create a list building series, I'm thinking, in the future. So I'll definitely, feel free to repost the Starum Ward and we'll talk about it. Dragon Darkness 100 says, hey Jay, I am going to start Adeptus Mechanicus. Where do I start? Uh, start always with um, the core. That's what I always say when you start off with Adeptus Mechanicus, with any army. Is find the core. For example, if it's formations based, you start off with you know the HQs and the formations that are required. Like Space Marines, you start off with a demi company. That's where I start off because it's the core of your army. If you are playing a, a standard combined arms detachment uh, codex, you start off with an HQ of your choice and troops. They're the foundation of your army. They are what's required. And then after you decide which troops, which there aren't that many choices anyway for ad mech. Um, in fact, there's no... Is there an HQ for Admech? Yes. Um, then you go from there. So always start off with, for me, if you're doing a standard combined arms detachment, start with the required. HQ, troops. And then decide what you want to run. Um, and uh, if you're doing a, a codex that has formations, start off with the required. You know, choose, and some of them have multiple requireds, or you can choose which of the requireds. And then you, in that case, you just choose what core you want for your army and then work your way outwards. That's where I recommend. But thank you very much for your comment. Uh, that was uh, Dragon Darkness. Jim White says, thank you for answering my question. You're welcome, Jim White, and thank you for your comment. David Battaglia says, Jay, as you know, Q is almost always followed by you. Have you considered a short called You and Jay? I have. Where you could have a short ish 15 to 30 minute show where you talk with one of your viewers similar to mwg chris's uh visions show it would depend on your internet connection a ala the issues you ran into with the bled yeah that's my biggest concern uh with the blenders codex but you could just do a skype audio feed just a thought to connect you with your fans share specific painting tips hobby tips shocks tips on love and romance Thank you, have a great one. David, thank you as always for your comments and your support. David Vitalia is awesome. He is one of my, my favorite people to play up against. My favorite orc player to probably play up against. Him and uh, my favorite two orc players to play against and to play and have fun with are, are David Vitalia and uh, who's also you know, Cody Rue. And then the other orc player would be Mike Groves, for sure. He's my partner in crime in my, in my tournaments. And he's another awesome orc player. So thank you very much for, to both of them. They're both great orc players to play up against. Next one is Con S. Jay, you had some great facial hair in a few of your old MWG videos. I did have facial hair. Will it ever make a reappearance? Maybe. I don't really play it by... I just go with whatever I want. Usually in the winter time is when I grow facial hair. Um, or in the colder months, because when I ride my motorcycle, facial hair helps. Hmm. Summertime, not as much. But that's just the way I roll. Maybe if I'm ever able to quit my other job, maybe I'll go through like a crazy beard phase. Maybe. Nothing, I'll not, you know, I'm not against putting anything past me. But it'd be hard, like if I grow a giant beard face, uh, like beard face in Scrubs, for example, how would you guys know if I'm doing the J face? Because all you see is like, I don't know, that'd be cool. Also, thank you for all your great videos you make. Always look forward to it. Thank you very much, Con S. I really do appreciate it. You know, every time I, I really, I... Every time I get positive feedback from y'all, it really makes me feel awesome right here. You know, it really does. Um, I'm still small enough that it, I, I really do care what you people think about, about my videos, about my content, and, and everything. I'm really, and I want to stay connected to that. So thank you very much. Black Toms. Hi, Black Tom. Hi, Jay. Long time no see. That's true. Last time I saw you, it was at Adepticon. I got to meet Black Tom at Adepticon, and I didn't think... You know, when I first met you, I didn't think you looked like a Black Tom, but that's okay. With the number and rate of codices coming out, you should be really busy. Yes. Is there a codex you would like to see come out and why? Also, what 6th edition codex are you looking forward to be re-released to 7th? What 7th edition 
Codex. What do you do? Do you enjoy playing against the most? Black Tom. Good question. All right, so let's start off with the top. So, which one was I really excited to see? Um, I was Dark Angels was one of the ones I was hoping for. That was one of the ones because Dark Angels was really early in sixth, and it got hit so quickly with Codex Creep because it was really overcosted. So I was very happy to see that one get replaced. Then the new Codex came out, and being a Deathwing player, it kind of hurt me in my heart. But I'm still able to play them. I'm going to do a lot of combined wing and maybe some Raven Wing armies and have a great time. Uh, Deathwing is probably done. I'm not going to play a pure Deathwing army because you really can't. But that's okay. I'm going to play a combination army and have a great time doing it. Um, what others now? Ignoring Dark Angels, let's say I'm addressing this question today. I would like Tyranids. Now the reason why Tyranids is because uh, Tyranids, their information is now scattered amongst, you know, like four data slates, the Codex, a bunch of other things. I would like to see all the information put into one central location, once again for the Tyranids, and maybe they might fix some things with the Tyranids. Yeah, Tyranids. Orcs, in my opinion, are the weakest. Um, fifth, if you look at all codices, in, from 6th edition, besides Adept Soror does, I would say Orcs are the weakest and in the biggest need of a new codex. Orcs or Chaos Space Marines. Um, Chaos Space Marines are also really heavily hit by Codex Creep. So, yeah. Um, what 7th edition codex would uh, do I enjoy playing against the most? Good question. There isn't really one specifically. I, I would play against any army. I really do. See, my favorite army to play up against is Orcs, but Orcs are, is a 6th edition codex. Uh, Tyranids, 6th edition codex. Good question. And I really don't have a lot of opportunities to play against 7th edition codice armies. Um, there aren't really any other Grey Knight players in this area that I play up against. Uh, I have played against Dark Angels already. Uh, I've played against Vanilla Marines so far. Eldar's tricky. Eldar to me is one of the biggest challenges, is when I'm playing against Eldar. So maybe Eldar. Eldar are one of those armies that it's a really challenging in your mind um, because you've got to anticipate the maneuverability and you got to pray that your opponent doesn't roll a lot of sixes. And when they do, things die. Mm -hmm. So I'd say Eldar. Elder's a cool army. I know Elder gets a lot of slack for being OP, which they're a very strong codex. Very strong. Um, the most frustrating would probably be Necrons, but I like Necrons. They're a cool army too. But Necrons is just so funny when you do like 18 wounds to guys who are in cover, and then like 10 of them roll their four ups, and then six of them pass their first reanimation, but there's three ones and they roll again and they pass them. So in the end, those 17 wounds equal like three or four, maybe five dead Necron warriors. It's mind blowing. Mind blowing. Yes. Pyre Captain Daniel says, Hey Jay, I may have asked this comment months ago, but I don't think it was in one of your Q&Js. Well, no problem. Uh, what do you think to the Primarch models from Forge World. I love them. Love them. Um, if I ever do competitive painting, especially the ones that recently came out, um, you know, Gilliman is, uh, is one of the most beautiful models. Um, Gilliman is one of the most beautiful models I've ever seen from Forge World. Uh, the Primarch models are just unbelievable. I can't wait. Um, I really, really love... Uh, who do I love? Ferris Manus, I really love him. Uh, Mortarian is really nice. You know, Horus, awesome model. Uh, I'm excited. I want to see Dorn. Yeah, obviously. So, love him. Which one is your favorite? Uh, of all the currently released ones, Gilman. He's just beautiful. Beautiful model. And would you collect them yourself? Absolutely. 
I also really like the ones that are like the, the heresy models that are non Primarchs. You know, they have some really good um, Imperial Fist ones as well, characters. Dennis Vandenhove says, Jay, if you're looking for some variety in your Grat tanks, I've already heard several gamers in my local area discussing the converted potential from the Cult Mechanicus Cataphron Battle Servitors. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Great suggestion, Dennis Vanderhoof. And uh, Bertozzi Motorsports says, I actually converted mine into rapiers for my Space Marines. They would be a great choice for grot tanks. Very good suggestions, guys. Thank you very much. Darth Craig, 21, says, I know you have many armies, but where do your nids rank in your favorites, and what drew you to them? They're in my top two. My, all right, depending on the... I, I go through phases of my tops, but I love nids. Nids are one of the armies that I will always love, like orcs. That's the thing with all my armies. I, I have a love for them that regardless of how they're doing, I will love them regardless. But uh, Tyranids are one of those armies that uh, I loved them back in second, and I couldn't collect them. So when I started collecting back in late fourth, early fifth, Tyranids were my first army back. And uh, I love them. They're not one of the most... Again, they have a couple good mono builds, but I'm not a really mono build player. So I hope they get some, some good updates in the next codex. Yeah, because I know like the competitive lists are like three flyrants and and stuff, but uh, they're they're right up there. Usually they're one of the games like if I want to have a great time, I play orcs or tyranids. Usually, the only thing is with battle reports is that being the filmer, um, tyranids are one of those armies that it's hard to film a battle report and try to keep it efficient, especially when you're doing all the movement and all the filming at the same time. So they tend to run you know warrior lists that are lower on model counts. I love them. Nids are awesome. Uh, what appeals to me is the original fluff and the look. I just love the look of them. I love the feel of them. I love the, the symbiotic relationship that they have. They're really cool. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Yeah. Lord Raul says, Good day, Jay. Good day, Lord Raul. I have a question about the new formations in the new Eldar Codex. Both the Aspect Host and the Dire Avenger Shrine can give plus one ballistic skill, yes. But does that apply to any Wave Serpents I purchase for them as well? Can I even purchase Wave Serpents for them? I don't think so. Maybe. Let's see. Hmm, good question. I don't think so. I think in the formation, you have to have, if I remember correctly, you need Exarchs. And you can't put them in Wave Serpents. So I don't believe your your question... I could be wrong. But I'm pretty certain your... I don't think you can have Wave Serpents for the, 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 the host. I don't know. Oh, there's a comment as well. Or you answered your own comment. Oh, the reason people say you can't have Wave Serpents and Aspect Host is because the formation restrictions... See, all units need Exarchs and Wave Serpents can't have them. That's what I'm thinking. That was my thought too. In my local meta, that's kind of how we play it, but I could be wrong. Is that all of the uh, all the units have to have Exarchs. So I don't know how you get them in Wave Serpents. It's a good question. Because hypothetically, you could buy a vehicle that you can't go for. Huh. Interesting. Sorry. I wish I could uh, put more, more influence on it, but in my meta, I'm pretty sure we play it that you can't take Wave Serpents for those. Dan Byrne says, Hi Jay, just wondering why you don't have a standard footer in your video descriptions which has links to the Warp Patreon spreadsheet, Facebook, etc. Saves you mentioning it a lot and I expect many people would discover those services who otherwise wouldn't. You know what, Dan? You're right. I really should. I did at one point. I've done it for a while. I did it for spreadsheet and I had a link for Patreon. I really should have a footer in, my, what do you think, in my comments? In the video descriptions. Yeah, I really should. So Dan, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best to start doing that. You know, for, you know, follow my Facebook here. Follow my Patreon here. The only, th the only downside to that is I know a lot of people get annoyed. And I kind of get annoyed sometimes when I watch a YouTube channel. That they're in there like, 
and like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and subscribe here and 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 here. And I just, I don't know. That's maybe why I didn't do it, but it's a very good point, Dan, because it'd be nice that that way people can follow my Facebook page and, and, you know, my Patreon, which is a huge support system for me. And the warp is awesome too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I really should. Thank you very much for your comment, Dan. Very good point. Very good point, Dan Bird. Sebastian Yalstrom says, Hi Jay, have you ever played any role-playing games? Yes. And if so, did you enjoy it? A bit. I played D&D &D way back in the day. Uh, three. What? Maybe 3.5, according to my cat. Was it 3.5? Are you sure? I guess so. Mandy thinks it was 3.5. Um, it was fun. You know, my DM wasn't... I, I think it was a relatively new DM. And the DM has a very... Or the GM is their now called. I don't know. GM or DM. They're very... They have a very strong impact on, on your experience. You know, a very, very good GM slash DM can make the world of a difference. And mine wasn't amazing. So I only did it once. But it was fun. You know, it wasn't the best experience, but, yeah. I think it was a mage or a bard. Or bard mage. I personally play Dark Heresy from Fantasy Flight Games, and I find it very fun. Yeah, I've heard of actually a few people play that game. There's nobody in my meta that really likes that one, but, uh, that has played it. But, yeah, I've heard of really good things. Fantasy Flight makes some great games. Thank you for correcting me, Mandy. Cats, they're always there to keep you accountable. Darko Stojkovic says, Please, Jay, answer this question. Okay, I will. When the warp will be available worldwide? Probably never. That's really unfortunate. I want to support you more, but it's not like Mini Wargaming website where you can accept credit cards. It's annoying at best. It's really true. Um, and I'm really sorry about that. That's the one major dark uh, downside to the warp to me is the fact that it's I have to rely on Google and YouTube and so far there's a bunch of countries that are available but there's a bunch of countries that aren't available so uh, Darko please leave what co country you live in and I will see if that country is available and now most of the time if a country is available I have created um, an opportunity for it but occasionally they add countries to our list and they've forgot to tell us it happens every now and then I've noticed that um, but the big country like Germany is still not available when I created the warp um, you know, a year ago, they told me Germany was on the list of very close to come countries, and it still hasn't happened yet. I figure when Germany happens, it'll be huge for the warp because and it was really cool when I did my warp preview week. It was like a third of the views came from Germany and a couple other countries that it wasn't available for, and that's one of the reasons why I created the uh, the, that's why I did the week preview. So, good stuff, Mattias. Matson. Vaf. Vaf Trudnir. Hi, Jay. Did you see the new Mad Max movie, by the way? No, I haven't yet. I always wanted to see it, but I just didn't have the time, or no one really wanted to see it with me. By the All Father himself, that was an awesome two hour ride of total insanity. Yeah, I heard that. And I've heard a lot of orc players now are, are taking ideas. Because basically, what I've, what I've heard is that all the Mad Max vehicles are like perfectly orky ideas and people are taking the orky ideas from Mad Max and making orky vehicles, vehicles out of them. I don't know how many points of orcs I got painted after that, but I sure don't have much left to paint. Exactly. Exactly. Orcs. It made everyone want to play orcs, apparently. Andrew McCormick says, Hey Jay, I have a question. A statement and a quest. Sure. Question first, I have a problem with sticking to one paint scheme. I spend ages painting a large number of models, then hate the scheme and stop, strip, and start again. I play Eldar, and have gone through the majority of craft worlds. And again, I'm flickering between ideas. A friend suggested I play multiple craft worlds in a single list, so 500 Yandin, 500 LA Talk, 500, custom, etc. Would this look silly? Or like I couldn't be bothered? Could you suggest anything else? No, that's the thing. That's actually a great idea. Um, the other op option is you paint like dire avenger like you you could choose because certain 
factions of Eldar have specific color schemes, like striking scorpions are green. So you can paint them green, and they don't look out of place in your normal army. You know, same for warp spiders, all, you know, all, a lot of the elites and fast attacks. Um, and as far as craft worlds go, you can paint multiple craft worlds and have them together. I know fluff-wise, some people might, you know, him and ha at it, but that's what I'd actually recommend. You know, or maybe you'll get lucky and find a color scheme that really means something to you. But that's in the meantime, is try other multiple color schemes, see what you like, see what you don't like, and do small amounts of models of each one. That way, if you don't end up liking them, you can always strip and start again, but it won't be too much of a hassle. Now, statement, Imperial Armor, 11, I think, Corsair 101 has been discontinued. So one would think Corsairs will be rewritten soon, as all the models are still available. Yes, that's what they typically do. The uh, Forge World, a lot of books go un... You know, like right now, the Orc one is gone. So expect a new version, like what they did with the Amphelion Project in the near future. Request. Could you do a Harlequin Codex review, please? I know the Codex Inside Out, but I want to get your take on it. Maybe. It's one of those older codices, so maybe I should. Also, your reactions to the Warlord traits would be hilarious. Cool. I will see. Thank you very much, Andrew McCormick. Y20K90 says, Hey, Jay couple of questions for you. With all these new codices coming out, don't you get the feeling NIDs might be out of their league? Yes. NIDs have like two really competitive mono builds. Yeah. NIDs and orcs right now are in a lot of trouble relative to most armies because most armies have access, especially with the new... Seriously. Um, NIDs and... Orcs are in a lot of trouble, especially with the two more recent codices, Dark Angels and Space Marines. The Triple Vindy list or the Triple Predator builds that people are now doing the tournament builds I've seen are disgusting against Orcs and Tyranids because Tyranids rely on cover. There's no involves really for Tyranids. You know, there's a handful of models of Tyranid involves. So Orcs rely heavily on cover. And sorry, no, Tyranids rely heavily on cover. Orcs now rely on a combination of cover and some involves if you run... Uh, custom force fields but um the vindicator apocalyptic blast will just be placed and instantly remove all your warriors all your venom thropes you know anything that's not toughness six which there is a good amount of toughness six in the codex all the monster creatures the tyrant guard the hive guard but um it, it's going to decimate things plus the triple preds i believe give you um uh, monster hunter so, yeah, Nids are in trouble right now. They're going to need... There, as I said, there are some competitive builds. Triple Flyerinth. You know, it's pretty much a, a breather. People like running those spores as troops. That way you min points in troops. Um, Molochs are still really strong. But, uh, unfortunately now, most armies have very easy counters to Tyranids. Uh, Tau, Eldar... Space Marines, Dark Angels, Grey Knights, um, Imperial Guard in a lot of ways. The, yeah, and then Orcs, same thing. Orcs are a very slow army, and they're very close combat driven in a game that primarily focuses on shooting. I don't imagine our next Codex being anywhere near as grape-tastic as the Eldars or survivable like the Marines or Necrons. No, I don't see it either. It would be nice to shake off the Crudence effect. Yeah. Robin Crudos. Uh, with Nids for several codices now. Heck, it's just I'd just be happy to have the army just match in both crunch and fluff. Yeah, same. And plus, it would be really nice to have Tyranids, all the information in one place. Because, as I said, Tyranid players, we have our meiotic spores, or what they're called, sporocytes now, in one, co in one book. You know, and... Yeah. Heck, I'd just be happy to have the army. Yeah. Okay, that was probably not all fair for, to the guy who wrote the rules that changed the nids into what they are now. Yet, I like to be able to look at my nids and know I have a chance at least matching up those next codexes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next question. Uh, this is actually his post here. I'm not going to the next question. Like, I, this is his next question. I got an extra Hierophant model that I got secondhand. It's still in pieces, not painted. I was wondering if I could send it to you because I love these Q&Js as well as your Painting with J series, as well. And I use Adblocker, so I sort of want to give back to the for the hours of enjoyment I get from watching and listening to you. 
I hope you keep up these Q&Js as well as painting with J's. It's really therapeutic and helps me get through painting all these darn nids. Also, Forge World is going to be pushing out the Warlord Titan. Have you seen images? Yes, and it's now out. It's amazing. It's like $2,500 Canadian, but it's amazing. And would you consider getting one? Maybe. It would take a lot of savings. If you had money to get one, that is. I doubt anyone could reasonably afford one. Yeah, it would like remain something to stare at. Like the rest of Forge World line. Thank you. And as why, so why 2090K? If you still have it available, I know this was about a month and a half ago post, but if you still have it available, I'd love it if you could send it to me. Contact me at j at jdidproductions.com or contact me through uh, YouTube and I'd love to respond to you. If you want to send it to me, that'd be amazing. No pressure or anything, um, but that'd be amazing. I'd love to build a hierophant for myself. So thank you very much. And I really... It's awesome for you to offer that. I don't uh, I don't mind that if you use ad blocker. I'm not mad about it by any means because you have the right to use ad blockers if you want. And I really appreciate your support. So thank you very much, uh, Y2090K or Y20K90. And if you want to send me it, awesome. I can uh, give you my address to send it to me. And I'll even gladly pay for the shipping. Uh, Mini Warzone says, Hey Jay, do you ever think about what kind of things could make for a great new series or are you happy with the regular content you already have? No, I'm always thinking about new series, and there's a few that I've thought about. There's three that I would love to do. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them right now, because, yeah, yeah, but there's a few. I'm always thinking about it. Now, the problem is, I'm a busy person, and I tend to fall into this, this like, like, this creative... Way, way of thinking that I just, you know, like each week I got to get the same videos out, you know, like face off or battle report, um, miniature painting 101. Uh, for the warp is where I've been trying a couple of new things. Like I did an airbrush 101 series that's still going, you know, my painting tutorials. It's just busy, you know, I spend so much time on the video series that I already have, and I still got to get back on track for like how to play 40k. So we'll see, but I definitely do think about it. I absolutely love all the 40k stuff you do as that's my top game, but could you do a little more about War Machine and Hordes content? I do try. Um, unfortunately, just a smidgen, yes. It's all in the warp, because uh, they, they want it, and I only have one friend who plays War Machine and Hordes, really that I have access to play with, which is my friend Andy, who comes down once every few months. Um, I should definitely put up a battle report for free in the free, in the free stuff. Maybe discuss War Machine Horde stuff. The only problem is I don't play it enough to actually know the ins and outs. Like Owen from, you know, Gaming with the Cooler. I should really thank you. Just a smidgen. P.S. I'm always excited to see the next Painting with Jay videos go up. Excellent. One month up today. I feel I always paint better while watching and listening to those in the background. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I love the series. I love doing Painting with Jay. It's become kind of my favorite series to paint now because I love the fact that at the end of the the hour I have a painted model you know I rant it's very therapeutic I was gonna say therapeutic very therapeutic uh, and in the end I have a painted model you know and I get a lot of work done it's just uh, it's an hour of of J time where I kind of shut out everything in the world and I force myself to sit down and work on a model for myself I love it I hope you find the same thing. Master Dwellin says, Hi Jay, have you, do you have any really old or very special miniature or wargaming book or something connected to wargaming in your collection? I do have, I saw a lot of rogue trader models. Um, the, I used to, is the answer. I used to have until the move. I lost um, uh, a couple boxes of stuff just somehow didn't make the move. Maybe it was thrown out by accident. Maybe it was in the wrong box and ended up being thrown out or something. I don't know. A couple of boxes of my stuff didn't survive the move when I moved to Peterborough from Guelph. And in one of the boxes was a Rogue Trader Orc Codex and a Rogue Trader Citadel catalog of all the models that I that they made at the time. You know, all the orcs with all the characters, you know, yeah. And those were the two things that I, I really, um, I really cherished from second. I do have, I still have all the rule books. Like I have a fourth edition rule book, a fifth, sixth, seventh. Um, but uh, yeah, those were the books that I think would answer your question. And as always, thank you very much for your your question, Master Dwaylen. Master Dwaylen was one of the guys really pushing for the return of painting with Jay. So. 
I'm glad. Now I'm at like episode 40. Doran's Apothecary. Doran's Apothecary. Says, hi Jay. Hi Doran. Apothecary. Be grateful for your thoughts on Razorback builds. I'm starting to build up a Crimson Fist. They're awesome. Uh, Crimson Fist Army, and I'm currently sit sitting around a thousand points or so. I'm planning to run multiple small units of m Marines with melted guns and Razorbacks. I don't have enough points and models to think about running a double demi company to get free transports. Oh, that's what I would have suggested. So I wanted to know how you and others would kit out my Razorback out. My other units include Librarian, four Plasma Guns Command Squad with Apothecary, Bolter Scouts and Land Speeder Storm. Last Cannon Devastators, and a Vindicator. Hmm. Hoping to bulk this out with three of her crazy Apocalypse Blast form. So. For me, there's two trains of thoughts with Razor Backs. Um, unfortunately, my first is Double Demi Company. Because then you get all the, the Razor Backs points for free. And that is hilarious. That's really where the Razorback builds shine is when you get them for free. You know, if you're doing a double demi company and you get eight free Razorbacks, that's eight times what, you know, 55 points each that you get for free. Um, and that's really where the, they shine. If you're going to go Razorbacks, it depends on your points levels. Um, I love Razorbacks. There's nothing wrong with Razorbacks at all, especially for multiple small squads. Because the new Space Marines Codex, with the Demi Company, you do get objective secured. So your purchased, uh, your purchased uh, vehicles, Razorbacks, also get objective secured. So you have all these objective secured things driving around the board, having hilarious fun. So there's two trains of thoughts that I like to run with mine. Either standard, just standard, um, with heavy bolters. Heavy bolters are great. Now, it also depends on what you're running up against in your meta. If you feel you need just bolter fire, uh, Imperial Fists you're running, or Crimson Fists, I think. Crimson Fists. Um, heavy bolters are amazing with them, because I'm pretty sure they also get bolter drill. I could be wrong. Um, or Twinling Last Cannon. Because you said you're running Last Cannon Devastators, but and a Vindicator. Um, but the problem is with only running, which I've found this exact thing, is if you're running one squad of Last Cannon Devastators, your opponent will target them really quickly because like Imperial Fist Devastators have, um, they have Tank Hunter. So what I find is every game, the first thing that my opponents do is kill my Devastators. So last cannon, a bunch of last cannon Razorbacks will, um, will fix that issue because you can fire multiple targets and it'll really help you pop those higher armor things that you need the last cannons for because you've got to expect your last cannon Devastators to be a target because whoever, because otherwise they'll sit in the back and kill everything. So your opponent will go for them quickly and they're typically the ones that, yeah, so I like the double, I like the Twinling Glass Cannon version myself. Them, or you go stock, just Heavy Vulture. But there's nothing wrong with Razorbacks right now. In fact, I love Razorbacks. My goal is to do the du Double Demi Company and just have a bunch of Razorbacks drive around the field. Another fun thing is like Razorbacks with White Scars, they all have Scout. That'd be amazing because you just Scout, turn one, get in a better position, move up, kill things. But yeah, it's great. And as I said, it gives a lot more target priority because you have these objective secured twinling glass cannons moving around the battlefield shooting stuff. It really helps. So, yeah, I really hope that answers your question. Uh, Doran's Apothecary. So that's all the comments for today. That was a lot of fun. I gotta do this again in a couple weeks, for sure. And as always, as I said, if you wanna check out my Spreadshirt, ooh, Crazy Eyes t-shirts, minigwargamerj.spreadshirt.com. But as I said, very importantly, thank you to all you people out there for supporting my videos, for commenting on this, for questions and for everything and all support you give me. Heck, one guy even offered to send me a Titan. If you want to still, awesome. Thank you so much. It just, it, it blows my brain and my heart the, the amount of support and awesomeness that I get from all of you. So thank you so much, all you people out there, for leaving your comments and leave more comments and questions in the section down below. And we'll keep talking. Probably a lot of stuff about Age of Sigmar will happen or something. It'll all be good. So thank you as always. 
And uh, till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.